KPH, Havana Kappa School, over. body on Earth as well as here in space. For instance, uh, we use ultrasound to try to capture images that uh, normally we get with MRI in the ground and the application there is for uh, countries that are not as fortunate as ours have an easy ac easier access to uh, ultrasound than they do MRI. And that's exciting for me to think that it, it'll help folks all around the world. Uh, what happens to all your wastewater and trash on the ISS? Over. Well, our wastewater becomes yes, uh, tomorrow's coffee, so to speak. We, re we reuse all of our wastewater and process it through a really uh, uh, special system that, that remarks, works remarkably well. But we just keep uh, collecting it in large bags. This is regular, regular everyday trash. And then uh, on periodically on cargo ships, we'll send it off... Uh, to burn a fiery death in the atmosphere. Hi, this is Hayden, and I am wondering: Are there any, are there ever any culture clashes or misunderstandings between the international crew members? Over. Very, a very good question. In fact, it could be kind of a funny answer. Sometimes uh, we all, we all relatively speak Russian, and the Russians most uh, speak speak English, but there's often times when we don't understand words and we mix the words up. And those are, I find, are the most humorous uh, clashes when we think we have the right word and we misplace with a word that's either inappropriate or just doesn't make any sense. And that can be quite, uh, quite funny. Uh, the cultural clashes, not so much up here. We've learned those lessons over the last several years, training uh, back and forth in Russia and America. And I was wondering, what do you miss most from Earth while on the ISS? Over. Well, besides my family, I would say a humongous bowl of really good ice cream. <laughs> Hello, this is Sam, KK6 EMJ. If you could change something about the design or layout of the ISSS, what would it be? Over. That's a great question, Sam. And I think what I would do is uh, put. I think what I would do is put more windows on. We have a, uh, a cupola, which is fantastic, uh, looking down at the Earth. And if I looked out right now, off to my left, I'd see uh, the coast of California. And the Japanese modules has a couple windows, but uh, there's not enough. You can never have enough windows in a spacecraft, no matter what you think the uh, design uh, will will be at the uh, at the beginning of your design process. I'm Jen, KJ6UGH, and I was wondering if weightlessness affects your dreams, and if so, how? Well, uh, I'm not really a dreamer on Earth, and I haven't had that many dreams up here, just a few normal ones. Nothing has been too particularly crazy, but what is hard to get used to is what to do with your hands when you go to sleep. They sort of float out in front of you, and... Uh, I tend to strap, keep them underneath my sleeping bag, and that keeps them uh, uh, secure. But that has caused me to have a little weird kind of dreams about my hands floating up uh, and around, because they actually were. Hi, I'm Cassidy. I was wondering if you kept a journal while you're in space to cope with the small living spaces. Over. No, I, I don't uh, have a journal. What I do is uh, I talk to my family every day. We have ability to call. Uh, on the phone if the satellite coverage coverage works. And uh, I find that the space 
it, we live in is about a size of a refrigerator. That's our personal space, and that's plenty of room when you have uh, all the whole volume of it to use. To it's plenty of room to escape from uh, any. Uh, of the rigors of the daily life if you want to get it away from anybody or anything like that. Hi, I'm Orian, KK6 EMK, and I was wondering how often do you get to talk to your families? Once a week, we have a video conference set up through Mission Control, much like Skype or FaceTime, although it's not those applications. Uh, and like I just mentioned, we also, depending on where we are in the orbit and the satellite coverage, we can make a telephone call through our computer uh, we put on a headset and talk into the computer, and to them it rings on their telephone. So every day or so, maybe every other day, I talk. Hi, this is Timmy, and I'm wondering, as a kid, did you always want to be an astronaut, or when you grew up, were you planning to have a different career? Over. Uh, that's a good question. When I was a kid, when I was your age, I never even thought about being an astronaut. Uh, much, A lot of astronauts had dreamed about it from when they were very young, but I was a little different. It wasn't something that I thought was possible for me. I never even considered it. Uh, it wasn't until I was maybe 25 or 26 when I was in the military and I learned about another guy who had a similar background as me in the SEAL teams who was an astronaut. His name was Bill Shepard. And uh, after meeting him and talking with him, I realized, my, hey, my background is similar to his. Why don't I just try as well? That sounds like an exciting career. And it, and it ultimately worked out for me. So I got really fortunate. He was the one, Bill Shepard, who motivated me. Uh, hi, I'm Ethan, and I imagine it takes quite a bit of work to be chosen to be an astronaut. Uh, why do you think you were chosen for this mission? Yeah, that's the question that all astronauts uh, ask ourselves and ask each other as we're sitting around the campfire, so to speak. Um, we, there's a boss, chief astronaut, and it's he, he or she's job to determine who will be the crew czar. Um, the hardest part about is just being, becoming selected to become an astronaut. I was real fortunate and happy when that happened and then the couple years of waiting to me was okay because I knew at least it was a long line so to speak but I was in the right line to get to space and then in terms of how specifically I was chosen it's really about who who is um, ready to fly at that time and who's medically qualified and who the right personalities are with the mix within the mix of the crew is probably another consideration I'm Jade, and I was wondering, what do you do in your free time? Over. Well, Jade, I mentioned that uh, windows are a fantastic thing to look out and, and watch the Earth go by. In fact, I used to live in San Diego, so uh, I, I was just the other day looking, taking pictures of, of, of the whole Southern California area. That's one favorite thing. The other favorite thing is to just enjoy the time with my international crew and sit around and talk with them and try to practice my Russian um, and enjoy this experience with those uh, wonderful guys that are up here with me, and soon-to-be girl. Hi, I'm Francis, and I was wondering how long did it take you to prepare to go into space? Over. Good question, Francis, because uh, I feel like I've been doing it for a long, long time, but uh, I'm really, really ready. It's a hard thing to be up here, uh, to be prepared for all the uh, possible malfunctions and emergency scenarios, so in order to do that, we train for about two and a half years once you're specifically assigned, but it takes an additional probably two years or so to be qualified to be an astronaut after you get chosen. So if you add all that up, the fastest you can get to space from the day you're called by the, uh, by the and NASA is about five years. Hi, I'm Della, and I was wondering, now that you've been in space, is there anywhere on Earth that you would like to visit in particular? Over. You know, uh, I was just thinking about that last week, and uh, New Zealand, to me, up from up here, looks like a fantastic place to visit. It has uh, all kinds of different terrain, beautiful coastline, and uh, looks like a place that would be really intriguing to go see. Hi, this is Alan, KK6 EMI. Uh, just wondering how do you deal with illness of a crew member? Over. Well, uh, most, a lot of crews have a doctor on part, as part of the crew. It's not a requirement. It just works out sometimes to be that way. In fact, Tom Marshburn just left last week, and he was a doctor. But now, right now, we have no doctors on board. So in order to prepare for that, all of us have, are trained in basically emergency medicine, the uh, airway, breathing, circulation type things. And, uh, and there's doctors on console and mission control all the time. 
that uh, can help us over the radio via telemedicine uh, to deal with anything beyond uh, what we can handle immediately ourselves. Hi, I'm Diego, and I was wondering how you cope with the small living quarters. Over. So it's not really hard. It's just it's, so with the whole volume of 3D space, it feels pretty large, and uh, I, I enjoy it. In fact, sometimes I go upside down to change my viewpoint inside my small areas, and that seems to work. Hi, I'm Isaac, and how long did it take to fly to the International Space Station? I didn't hear you, but uh, it sounds, uh, thanks so much for being with me. This is uh, November Alpha 1 Sierra Sierra out. Have a fantastic day in California. Thank you very much.